Hi, third graders. My name is Miss Ott, and I teach third grade at Gatewood Elementary. Go Gators! So I'm going to be teaching your reading lesson for the week, or reading lessons for the week. Um, the past few weeks, you have been taking responsibility and explaining your thinking by giving reasons and supporting your thinking with ideas. Today, I'm going to be reading to you a book called Keepers. Keepers is written by Jerry Hanel Watts and illustrated by Felicia Marshall. In this story, you're going to be hearing a fiction story about two main characters. These characters are a boy named Kenyon and his grandmother, Little Dolly. So just by looking at the cover of this story, what are some things that you wonder about this story? Why don't you think to yourself and then tell yourself one or two things that you wonder about this story. Great. Now I'm going to read most of this story to you today. So it's going to be kind of a long one. And then I'll finish the story on Wednesday. Listen really carefully to this story as I read it to you slowly and think about what ideas might be important to understand and remember. So this is Keepers. His grandmother's heavy snoring told Kenyon that she'd finished her storytelling. He liked to listen with his eyes closed, so he hadn't realized she was through until the snore. He loved her stories as familiar to him Familiar just means like well-known. As familiar to him as if they had been his own. But he knew she got tired quickly since her stroke. And stroke is just something that happens when there's a lack of oxygen to the brain. He loved her stories as familiar to him as if they'd been his own. But he knew she got tired quickly since her stroke. So he rose quietly and eased to the kitchen to glance at the clock. Nearly four o'clock, he whispered. He could just make it to the ball field if he left now. His tired old glove lay in his room beside the reminder. A reminder is just like a way to remember something. Beside the reminder, he printed in, a, in big bold letters, 90 and two Saturdays. He didn't want to forget a present for his grandmother's 90th birthday. Kenyon pounded his cracked glove with his right hand. He didn't have to worry about that yet. He tiptoed to the front door. Where do you think you're going, boy? Kenyon's quiet, easy glide to freedom was frozen by his grandmother's words. To play baseball, he mumbled. Did you finish your homework? She demanded. Mostly finished, little dolly. From the corner of his eye, he saw the white hair snap around. Kenyon let the, do the door fall shut and turned as his grandmother lit into him. Mostly? Mostly is not good enough, child. There's some things can't be done mostly. Can't mostly be dead. You're either dead or you're not. Can't mostly be crazy. You're either crazy or you're not. And I'll finish, he interrupted. Man, she did take a lot of words to say no. Little Dolly's voice kept on muttering with her list of non-mostlies, but Kenyon opened his history book and shut out her talking. Since his mother died six years ago, he and his dad lived with Little Dolly. He still didn't know why she was called Little Dolly. There wasn't much little about her. She was a big-boned woman with great big hands and a great big voice and a great lot of words. So take a moment to pause and tell yourself what has happened so far in this story. Here we go. Kenyon tried his best to study his history, but he couldn't concentrate on all those long ago dates and names. His mind was filled up with more important things. Things like Mo Davis's fastball and whether he could hit it today like he did yesterday. Clean out of the park. Mo thought he was some kind of pitcher with his real leather glove, but Kenyon didn't mind on days like yesterday. Days when Kenyon felt like a hitting machine that could not be denied. That had been a true wallet bat day. 
And while a bad day is like a made up word, it just means like a good day for hitting baseballs. That had been a true wallet bat day. By the time Kenyon reached the park diamond, he had to take leftovers on team and position. It's about time, Mo taunted. Did you have to help Granny into the sun? Kenyon's knuckles burned as he clenched his fists tightly. And clenched is kind of like this. It means like you squeeze your fist really tightly. Kenyon's knuckles burned as he clenched his fists tightly. He didn't like to hear little Dolly spoken of poorly. So much for another wallet bat day, he thought. That evening, Kenyon sat on the peeling floor of the porch while little Dolly rested on the swing. Tell me a story, little Dolly, he begged. You tell instead, she answered. Tell about the stories you read in your history book. Ah, those are boring. Kenyon pushed the swing gently. Only good stories I can tell are about baseball, and you don't care about that. Oh, that's true enough, I suppose, little Dolly agreed. But a good storyteller can make you care with how she weaves the tale. Of course, I ain't even tell you that. The words are for the next keeper. Keeper? Kenyon asked. Yes, keeper of stories and legends. My grandma said they had keepers back in Africa for each tribe, but I can't say about that. A tribe is like a group of people who have similar or the same ancestors or people that they're related to. Yes, keeper of stories and legends. My grandma said they had keepers back in Africa for each tribe, but I can't say about that. Can we can say we've had keepers in our family since always. My great grandma, Daisy, my grandma Dormine, and me. Keeper holds on to the past until she can pass it on to the next. Little Dolly squinched her dark brown eyes. Don't know who I'll hand my tails to you, though. Her large fingers plucked at the sleeve of her blouse. Kenyon stopped the swing and he knelt beside her. Little Dolly, I'll be the keeper. I love your stories. Her eyes looked deep into his, searching. Lord, honey, that's nice, but you're a boy. I gotta find me a girl keeper. You can't be a keeper if you're a boy. To take a moment to tell yourself again what has happened so far in this story. What do you think? So think to yourself or if someone's next to you, maybe tell them. What do you think the title Keepers has to do with this story so far? What is a keeper? What is important about a keeper? Think to yourself now about what you know about Kenyon. What do you know about little Dolly? How can you describe these characters? The next day, Kenyon picked up an old shoebox and carried it to his bed. He slid the top off and dumped the contents onto the quilt. He'd been saving all his neighborhood chores money to buy something for little Dolly's 90th birthday. You know, she did drive him crazy about schoolwork. Kenyon thought she was the best. He headed out to see what he could find. Kenyon went to the bakery first. Hey, Mrs. Montgomery. The woman behind the counter reached into the glass display case and pulled an oatmeal cookie from the pile. Oatmeal's good for you in the morning, she said with a wink as she handed the still warm cookie to Kenyon. What can I do for you? I'm trying to figure out what to get little Dolly for her birthday. Kenyon forced his words around the cookie. One of the things I was considering was one of your strawberry shortcakes. Little Dolly says no one can come close to touching your cake. Would you make one? Mrs. Montgomery smiled gently. If that's what you want, but they're $15. Oh, I've got that and more, he said, but I'm just looking today. Kenyon wandered along Main Street, going in and out of shops, talking of ideas for little Dolly with all of the shopke shopkeepers, for they all knew his grandmother. And a shopkeeper is just somebody who works at a shop. 
talking of ideas for little Dolly with all of the shopkeepers for all they, they all knew his grandmother. The antique store where she could tell stories about many of the items for sale, the carriage ride place where little Dolly always delighted the tourists with her tales, the soldier cemetery where she and Kenyon helped the caretaker decorate with flags on holidays. So again, take a moment to tell yourself what has happened so far in this story. Think about the problem in the story, how they're trying to solve the problem. Kenyon was sliding his fingers along the storefronts when he saw, right under his hand, a leather baseball glove on sale. Real leather. He went in. He tried it on. It fit as if it had been made just for him. He punched it with his fist, and the rich aroma of new leather filled his head. He thought about Mo Davis, and within five minutes, that brand spanking new leather glove slid into a crisp shopping bag. Kenyon ran to the field and tried it out. Mo wasn't around, but there were plenty of kids to ooh and ah over his purchase. He fielded grounders with it, spit into it, and scratched his name on it with a penknife. And then, when he headed home for lunch, streaked with dust and full of pride, then he remembered little Dolly. Kenyon felt as if he couldn't breathe right. His eyes opened wide and he could feel his heart beating against his ribs the way a bat beats a ball when it connects for a homer. A homer is a home run. What'll I do? What'll I do? All the way home, folks asked him if he'd decided yet on the gift for little Dolly. He managed to mumble something. Mrs. Montgomery looked at that ball glove and he knew that she'd figured it out. When he got asked to a pickup game later, Kenyon said no and went to his room. His dad came in, feeling all over Kenyon's head, making him stick out his tongue. I'm not sick, he told his dad. You've never said no to a baseball game, son, never. Kenyon slumped onto his bed. I'm not sick, I'm just stupid. Why in the world would you say that? Dad, have you ever done something you were sorry for, but you couldn't change it? Kenyon looked straight into his father's eyes. His dad, dad let out a breath slow. Well, sure. Everybody has, I expect. So what did you do? Told myself I'd do better the next time. And then went on. You can't go back. You can only go forward. And that's where we're going to pause for today. I'll finish the rest of the story tomorrow, or on Wednesday. Um, but I want you to think to yourself about that last line that his dad says. You can't go back, you can only go forward. What do you think his dad means by that? What does it mean that you can't go back and you can only go forward? This is just the first part of this lesson. Again, I'll finish the story on Wednesday. During your independent reading today, you're gonna to be reading a fiction book. And I want you, as you're reading your story, to be using either sticky notes or a separate piece of paper to write down or to mark places where something important happens in your story. It can be an important, important event or an important idea but as you're reading, if it feels like it's really important, I want you to just write it down or mark it with a sticky note. Once you're done with your independent reading, I have an extension activity for you. And in this extension activity, um, we're gonna be, I want you to be thinking about stories that you have that you would want to be passed down or you would want to be shared. So in this story, Keepers, um, we learned that Keepers are people who hold on to stories and who pass them down from generation to generation. And these stories are often about their families or about traditions or about their culture. So I want you to think about a story that you know. 
It can be a story that somebody else told you, or it can be an experience that you've actually had. And for your extension activity, I want you to write that story. Who's in the story? What happens in the story? Think about something that you want to be passed down and that you want to be told. Once you're done with that, you are done with your reading for the day. Thanks so much for being here with me, and I'll see you guys on Wednesday.